The following video presentation is a part of a series of training aids that were developed for the Certified Aggregate Producer Program through the cooperative efforts of the Indiana Department of Transportation and the Indiana Mineral Aggregates Association. The following video presentation describes the proper methods by which a representative sample may be obtained from stockpiled aggregates. This presentation will cover sampling fine aggregates and coarse aggregates from stockpiles following procedures set out in Indiana Test Method, ITM 207. Coarse aggregates include both coarse graded and dense graded aggregates. Following the proper test procedure is especially important during the sampling stage of quality control process because sampling is the first step in the testing process and the goal is to obtain a representative sample from the stockpile. You will need the following items for this test procedure. Square bit shovel, appropriate size. Fire shovel. Sampling tube. 3 inch, 75 millimeter minimum diameter and 3 feet, 1 meter minimum length. And a sample container. Sampling coarse aggregates from a stockpile. The first step in the sampling procedure for coarse aggregates is to use a front end loader to remove between 10 and 15 tons of material from the stockpile. This will become the sample pile. The loader operator uses the front end loader to dig into the stockpile in the same manner in which he would if he were loading the truck for shipment. The loader operator should not drag the bucket on the existing ground when doing this process because of possible contamination of the stockpile. However, when the material is emptied onto the ground to make the sample pile, the bucket should be as low to the ground as possible and then the material rolled by slowly raising the bucket at the same time as the bucket is being emptied. The intent here is to reduce the distance the material is allowed to free fall, which will reduce the amount of segregation that may occur. This will take more than one pass if the loader bucket capacity is less than 10 tons. Each subsequent pass shall be conducted in the same manner as the first pass, and the material will be uniformly placed over the material from the previous pass. The loader operator should also make sure to leave enough room between the sample pile and any other obstructions so that the sample pile can be mixed from all sides. Once the loader operator has laid out enough material, the next step is to thoroughly mix the sample pile. At this point, the sample pile will typically have an oblong shape. The loader operator begins the mixing process by starting at one of the ends of the oblong shaped sample pile. The bucket is lowered to the ground but not scraping the ground and the bucket is pushed into the sample pile until the bucket reaches the midway point of the pile. Then the bucket is slowly raised and that end of the sample pile is smoothly rolled. Now the loader operator maneuvers the loader to the opposite end of the sample pile and repeats the process on that end of the pile. At this point, the sample pile will appear oblong again. If the sample pile does not appear to be uniformly mixed, the process shall be repeated. The sample pile is now ready to be sampled. Do not strike off the top of the pile. The sampling points on the sample pile are taken at the height that represents the center of the volume of the pile. Since the sample pile is essentially conical in shape, that height is approximately one-third the height of the sample pile. At a minimum, six full shovels of material will be removed from the sample pile at equal increments around the pile. These samples in total will represent the field sample of the coarse aggregate. A square bit shovel is used for this part of the procedure. 
The size is required to be adequate to meet the minimum weight requirements of the test to be conducted on the sample. For coarse aggregates, the minimum weight of the field sample is The weight of the sample depends on the maximum particle size of the material being inspected. As a rule, a larger top size material requires a larger sample. For example, a 25-pound sample of number 2 coarse aggregate would not be as representative of that material as a 25-pound sample of number 11 coarse aggregate would be. The inspector shall insert the shovel horizontally into the sample pile, keeping the bottom of the shovel parallel to the ground until the shovel reaches full depth. Then the inspector carefully raises the shovel horizontally, keeping the bottom of the shovel parallel to the ground and taking care to keep as much of the sample as possible on the shovel. Each shovel full of material is placed into a container and then taken to an area to be split down into the proper test sample size. Fine aggregates are sampled from stockpiles in much the same way as coarse aggregates are sampled from stockpiles. However, instead of the square bit shovel, either a fire shovel or a sampling tube is used to remove the material from the sample pile. As in the case of coarse aggregates, the loader operator removes material from the stockpile. That material is rolled out onto the ground and then mixed using the rolling action as described earlier. Once the sample pile is prepared, the technician retrieves the samples from the sample pile. Here, the technician uses a fire shovel to retrieve the samples. The technique is the same as the square bit shovel. Here is a view of the technician using a sampling tube to retrieve the sample. In either case, the samples are dispensed into a container and then taken to an area to be split down to the proper test sample size. The sample size must be adequate to meet the minimum weight requirements of the test to be conducted on the sample. All fine aggregate samples are required to be a minimum of 25 pounds. In the event that a fine aggregate stockpile does not exceed the height of the technician and there is no apparent segregation, the technician may procure the sample directly from the face of the stockpile. However, before actually obtaining the sample, the technician shall first remove the surface crust from the sampling area or areas. Under no circumstances shall a technician ever obtain a sample by climbing onto the stockpile. Additionally, technicians shall always keep a safe distance from any stockpiles with over-steepened slopes. Aggregate sources fall under the jurisdiction of the Mine Safety and Health Administration, or MSHA, and are subject to very stringent safety rules. Please remember to check in at the mine office for specific safety instructions before continuing on to any mine property. This concludes our presentation. Please consult your CAP training manual and respective test method for more detailed information.